big news for the week that began last Saturday, February 19th, and ended today, Friday, February 25th. I'm Michael McCarthy. I'll be your over-caffeinated air traffic controller, randomly assigning runways to various news items based on how the spirit moves me. Here's one. Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi offered no concessions to protesters who have shaken his regime by capturing several major cities, denouncing them as drunkards, terrorists, and drug fueled mice. Protesters responded by saying, drug fueled mice? What does that even mean, Mohammar? To which the Libyan despot went on to say, you know, because you are crazy the way you are acting. To which the protesters said, we are not crazy, you're crazy, and you're mean, and you dress funny, and you seem to not be able to grow facial hair. Gaddafi shouted back, I can grow facial hair, I just choose not to. And while the debate degenerated into further name-calling, protesters in the west of Libya took over all the oil fields. The end. This week, the Obama administration said it would no longer support the Defense of Marriage Act, meaning the president has agreed to repeal the military's ban on openly gay service members. The spokesman for Alexander the Great, speaking from beyond the grave, said it's about fucking time. I'm the greatest soldier who ever lived, and I'm as gay as they come. And you know what else? I'm in heaven. Ha ha ha. Suck on that, Puritan assholes. End quote. Emboldened by the news that earthquake victims in Christchurch, New Zealand, have been using their cell phones to text messages for help, several companies have released competing apps, ranging from the helpful to the not-so-helpful. One, using the phone's GPS feature, sends out a message to all contacts specifying the owner's exact location. Helpful. While another features an anorexic emoticon mouthing the words to Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On. Not-so-helpful. The fight still continues in Madison, Wisconsin, with demonstrators intent on preserving public employees' collective bargaining rights, while the newly elected governor, Scott Walker, attempts to strip those employees of said rights. Now, as is the case with every issue, if you look deeper, you can see both sides. On one hand, you have a group of hard-working civil servants who wish to be compensated fairly for a specific service rendered to the state, and they want that compensation to be commensurate with an appropriate standard of living. On the other hand, you have a group of right-wing idiot Neander fucks so seduced by the extreme right-wing, that's the 1% of the population that owns 80% of the wealth, that they somehow miss the fact that like a puppet, a big corporate hand has been shoved so far up their ass that their speech is being manipulated in the hope of seducing the entire population into thinking that up is down, that hot is cold, and that this bullshit is not an attempt to toss this country back into the Stone Age and pretend it's progress. In other news, how about that Charlie Sheen? You know, how about that Charlie Sheen? For the most part, it is my considered opinion that most entertainment news is not news at all. It's more like a piece of yarn used by the powers that be to distract the cat, us, from those whispered headlines that point to the slow erosion of our civil rights. But then there's Charlie Sheen, who this week moved from TMZ staple to Shakespearean tragedy, sort of a modern-day King Lear, if Lear were slightly younger, had a huge coke problem, and was anti-Semitic. Here's the thing. If somebody as schooled in media manipulation as Sheen blurts out something anti-Semitic on a radio show, then it's a wake-up call. It's a reminder that it's out there, and that it might be coming back. Anti-Semitism, that is. And with that in mind, we'd like to take you to this infomercial. I can't help but notice something different about this room. You guys redecorated? Hardly. We just installed our new Anne Frank bookcase. That's it! Yes, authentically modeled after the original bookcase that helped to hide that famous 14-year-old Jewish girl and her family in occupied Amsterdam in 1942, this delightfully attractive piece of laminate pressboard swings open on brass hinges to reveal a hidden staircase leading to a secret attic. Come take a look. Charming. But why, for heaven's sake? <laughs> you see, Dad, with racism enjoying a resurgence of popularity among a lot of disenfranchised, angry white guys, we were concerned for the safety of our black, 
Jewish and gay friends. Hey, don't forget us Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we won't. In fact, with our new Anne Frank bookcase, we can hide as many as 30 friends quite comfortably too. So when they start rounding everyone up, you'll be ready! Exactly. The Anne Frank bookcase, when you simply have to get away. This has been Big News. I'm Michael McCarthy. Thank you so much.